But John chapter number 6, and we're going to start reading down in verse number 9. It says, There is a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was, such, there was much grass in the place, so that the men sat down in number, about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said, unto his, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above them that had eaten. Our grace, Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity, Lord, to stand behind this desk, Lord, to preach your word. Lord, it's just such an honor and a privilege, Lord, to be able to do anything for you, Lord. We ask you just help us this morning, be with our pastor and help him. Lord, we just ask you break revival out down there today as well. Uh, Lord, and share some of them, some of the stuff that's been going on here. Lord, I ask you just help me this morning, be with what you laid upon my heart. Lord, just help me to convey it to your people the way you gave it to me. Lord, it can be a help, a strength, and encouragement to each and every one of us here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I'm going to look at by way of introduction is verse number 9. As I want us to look at the presence that's required. Uh, he talks about there's this lad here. Now keep in mind our problem is too many times is, is that is all we are is we are here. It required that lad being willing to give up his lunch. It required that lad to be in the presence to know what was going on. Uh, you know it's not about just being here this morning. Not sitting here worrying about what you're going to get to the grocery later on. Not worried about where you might be able to get in to eat today without having to have your mask as you walk in. Not worried about what we're going to do the rest of the afternoon or how hot it's going to be or we're going to have to go home and water our flowers so they don't dry out today or whatever it may be. Our presence is required here this morning to be here fully, not just in body, but in mind, body, and spirit to be here completely if we're going to get God's help this morning. So we see the presence required in verse number 9. The second thing in verse number 9 that I've seen is we see the um, perplexed regime. He had, he had the five barley loaves and two small fishes, and they said, but what are they among so many? Why are we perplexed so often with what God does? Why are we perplexed so often when we're faced with that storm? We're faced with that storm, that thing that comes up in our life, like how is God going to get us through this? Why are we always find that so perplexing? Because time after time, he's been faithful to get us through whatever it is we've gone through. Time after time, we can look at other people's lives and see how he's touched them. And if he's done it for them, he'll do the same thing for us. We see the perplexed regime also in verse number 9. But then I want us to look at verse number 10, is we see the partakers that are registered. And it says, And Jesus sat down, make the men sit down, and it tells us at the end that the number was about 5,000. Well, not only just 5,000, that's just the men. Because in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 21, and they had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. So we know, we, we now have an idea of exactly how big of a miracle this is going to be uh, when we see how many people are sitting down uh, that are about to partake of, of this little lad's lunch. But in verse number 11, I want you to see the presence, how it's about to get real. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. Now this is going to be the first spot I'm going to have to ask you to use your imagination here a little bit. This is how real it's about. Uh, put yourself in one of those disciples' positions, going around and passing out to people. Now think about it, if you go back and we know, uh, in, in verse, we go up in verse number 8 and it talks about Andrew and Simon Peter, so we'll just use those two. Can you imagine An Andrew hollering over to Simon Peter, Brother Jordan, hey, how much do you have left? I've been to a thousand people, and my basket's fuller now than what it was when it started. How much do you still have left? See, when, when we realize some of the things that God's done for us at times, that's when that presence will begin to get real. That's what a little bit of what happened at Revival. It just became to get real to us. We see how God touched us and how God can do things and how God moved to the service. And, and you've seen people get right and see people get saved, and that presence becomes real. I've said many a times, from the first time the brother Doug ever shared this story, I want that presence to get so real that we all smell it. Yeah. Uh, I could I could tell you that story. I'm not trying to be uh, say you said it off. I, I could tell you that story almost as good as he could because I want to be able to smell it. Right. I want to hear him walking through the leaves that he talked yeah. about in the mountain that time. Yeah. I want that presence to get yeah. just as real as it was here. 
Not only we see the presence get real, we see the people rewarded. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragment. When, he, when they were filled, that's what I wanted to stop at. We see that people get rewarded. They were willing to sit there and listen to what Jesus was teaching them, listen to what he had to say, and then he gives them enough food that what? They were filled. Yep. They didn't all just get a little scrap. They didn't all just get a little fragment. They got filled. When we are, when we are willing to come, and we're willing to allow his presence to get real, we're willing to be uh, completely present, we'll get filled. We will walk out of here filled with whatever it is that God has for us each day. And each one of us is different. That's why you could have the pastor come in or anybody come in and preach a salvation message and you could be saved for 30 years and still walk out of here just as joyful as if somebody had gotten saved. Sure. Because his presence can be real and we can get rewarded. But the last thing, by way of introduction, went that introduction a lot faster than I thought. <laughs> Y'all better get your mask loosened up so you can go out and eat, right? <laughs> but in verse number 13, we see the product that was remaining. It says, Therefore they that gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above them that had eaten. Twelve baskets. That little lad had a lunch of five barley loaves and two fishes. And after he was willing to give it to Jesus and allow Jesus to bless it and allow all those people to be fed, he had twelve baskets left over. Amen. And what I want to preach on with God's help this morning is when you carry your baskets home. I want you to use your imagination. Think of that little boy. How many people might have seen him pass as he was going wherever he was headed that day. And he ends up in this crowd of people. And now they see him come back with 12 baskets full of food. I didn't think he was going to the market, young man. Oh, I wasn't going to the market. Let me tell you where I've been today. Let me tell you what I see today. And we'll get to all that in a little bit. But when we will carry our baskets home, there's a couple things that it will show us. Number one, it will show us how to be humble. Because when you sit down and you really are willing to count your blessings, when you are willing to sit down and realize all that it is that God's done for you, it should humble you. It should put you in that state to realize just how good God's been to you. But see, too many times we get to look at what everybody else has. And we get to looking around at how we think God has blessed everybody else. We lose sight of how good God's been to us. Yeah. We lose sight of everything that God's given to us from uh, whether it be our home, whether it be uh, our vehicles, no matter what it is, we lose sight of what it is that God's done for us. Sure. You know, I remember seeing a video, I don't remember when it was here a couple weeks ago, and talking about, you know, this guy pulled up at a stoplight, I believe it was, next to a car. And he looks over that guy next to him, that guy next to him, he's got a car, you know, probably worth as much as that guy's house. And he's like, well, I sure do wish I had that car. And that guy goes home, and, and he goes in, and he goes up to his wife, and his wife, uh, I, I can't remember now, I think she was just like in a wheelchair. And you don't see that. And she looks out, and she sees somebody running, that just, just running along the sidewalk, and how much she wishes she was there. See, we have a lot to be thankful for. Right. A lot that we take for granted every day that we have the ability to just get up and walk around. We have the ability to just move. And we just don't give a second thought at times. But if we're willing to carry our baskets home, if we're willing to realize the blessings that God has given us, it'll show us how to be humble. Not only will it show us how to be humble, it'll also help slow us down. I had a fellow at work on Friday or Thursday this past week, and, and he works in a different department. I don't get to see him very often much anymore. And I asked him how his family was. And he goes, well, he said, everything's good. He said, my, my son, he goes, he's really gotten into T-ball. He said, man, it just seems like it's T-ball three, four, five nights a week right now. I was like, oh, just wait. It's only going to get worse, brother. I said, it's only going to get worse. I said, he's still little right now. I said, it's only, I remember this time of year, uh, even three years ago. You know, we'd be, uh, Bella would have cheer practice three nights a week, and Caitlin would have practice two nights a week, and she'd work the other uh, two days a week or whatever, and we was running people everywhere, it seemed like. Not anymore. You know, we just, Caitlin, throw her own keys and tell her, you just go on and do whatever you're going to do, and Bella's not cheering right now, so it's nice to have that little bit of free time. But sometimes if we're willing to carry our baskets home, it can slow us down we see just how good God is. Because when we're willing to count our blessings yes. and we're willing to get all consumed with God, yes. it'll slow us down. Yes. And realize we don't have to be in such a hurry. We have no place to go, yes. really. We don't have to be in such a hurry. We can just sit around and enjoy God's goodness sure. the way we did at Revive. 
we can just sit around and enjoy how God, how good God is to us, and the things that He's given us, and the things that He's doing for us, and it can just help slow us down. Not only can it show us how to be humble, not only does it show us how to slow down, but then there's a few things that we can show others. Amen. You know, I talk about this all the time, and I'm going to get another drink so I can slow down. It seems like, Brother Doug, no matter how much time you spend praying, how much time you spend studying, how many notes you have in here, how much you're going to make sure it goes to a certain length, it never makes it. Never makes it. <laughs> Never. And who knows? Maybe these three will go a little bit faster than the other ones. So now Brother Tommy's already thought, oh, he's only got three more points. Where are we eating at, Christine? I didn't see him. I didn't see him. He's already excited down there. Some things that it can show others. We're willing to carry our baskets home. We're willing to be like that little lad. And we're willing to carry our baskets home and allow others to see certain things. It can show others exactly what he's capable of. In Ephesians chapter number 3 and verse number 20, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. We can show others exactly what it is that God can do. We can speak to others and say, this is how good God is. And I, I kept saying, and, and Brother Brandon, I, I kept meaning, I, I wish I had told you this beforehand. I had no intention on bringing this up up here, but here it is. So at work, the very next day, after Brother Brandon come up here and, he, and, he's, and he, he's hugging on Sister Lynn and gets right and gets back in church, the very next day, I'm standing in church. And I'm talking, and the, the two guys that's in our little group, the one guy asked me, he says, you know, he says, he said, Brian's just seemed real down lately. I said, well, my understanding is he's got from his son that he's gotten out of church. He's not going to church the way he used to be. I said, you get out of church, Brother Tommy. I said, God will do that to you. He can make yeah. you miserable. Right. And he said, he goes, well... He goes, I used to go to church. He goes, I know you probably don't believe that. And I was struck. I was like, no. And I didn't tell him this, but I was thinking, nope, I sure wouldn't believe that you used to go to church. Because he's somebody that you talk about church, Brother Tommy. He won't, he won't ridicule you or make fun of you or nothing like that. He just shows no interest. He, he'll just change his subject, shows no interest on anything. He says, yeah, he said, I used to be in church all the time, Brother Jordan. He said, I used to be, every time the doors were open, he said, I was at church. I'd go out on visitation. He said, I'd do anything. He goes, and I just kind of got out. He goes, it's hard when you get out to get back. I said, well, let me tell you what happened to my church last night. I said, we have a fella. I said, it's been out for 30 years. And his eyes lit up, really? I was like, yeah. I was like, you can go back to church, Bill. You can get back in church. Well, I know the church up where I'm at. I really like that preacher. I really like Then go back to church. And I don't know if you'll end up going back to church or not. But it just shows we can have something we can tell people just what God's capable of doing. Bill, you've not been out 30 years. It hasn't been that long, so don't tell me God can't. When we're willing to carry our baskets home, we can show others just what God's capable of. Think of the people as that lad walked back home, all the people that he might have fasted, and he's like, what? Where'd you get all that? Well, let me tell you what Jesus did today. He took that little basket of five loaves and two fish that I had, and this is what I have left over. After he fed over 5,000, we can show others what he's capable of. Not only can we show others what he's capable of, we can show others just how good he is. Look again in verse number 14. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is the truth that the prophet should come into the world. When we're willing to show others, we can show others exactly how good he truly is. They were able to see there in verse 14. Though those men, they had seen the miracle that Jesus did. When we're willing to carry our baskets home, we're willing to go out into the world and show others, we can then show them just how good he is. We talked about the blessings and things like that of God because too many times what happens is is we look at those that are blessed and we look at those that have things going for them and unfortunately in the world we live in today our mind immediately goes to bad things. Well, they're getting that because they're cheating somebody. They're getting that because they're doing this or they're doing whatever. And that's not the case. You could tell people, no, this is just how good God is. Let me tell you what I come from. Let me tell you what, what, what I knew growing up and this is what God's done for me. These are the people along the way that he put into my life. These are the jobs along the way that he blessed me to have. And this is how he's blessed my life. And we can see that miracle in him. They can see that miracle in us performed by him. We can show others exactly how good he is. Brother Tommy, if you was paying attention, that was two. This is it, buddy. (laughs) 
not only can we show others how good he is, not only can we show others <clears throat> what he's capable of, but we can show others exactly who he is yes. in our life. Amen. In Psalms chapter 18 and verses 1 through 3, it says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, that I shall be saved from mine enemies. When we're willing to carry our baskets home, when we're willing to do and show how God's blessed us, we show others exactly who he is to us. We was driving home Wednesday night after Brother Phil preached. And Bell asked, you preaching Sunday? Said, yes, Bell, I'm preaching Sunday morning. You got this. You got this. And I was sitting back here thinking this morning, I had some other stuff already in my notes, and God said, you need to put this in there. God doesn't say, you got this. God says, I got this. God says, I got this. Whatever it is you're going through, I got this. What's he tell us in John chapter 10 and verses 28 through 30? It says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Amen. See, God tells us, I got this. And when we are willing to go out and show others how good God's been to us, sure. We show others exactly who he is to us. And that's when others can look at us and say, how is it that you face uh, 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 cancer, Brother Jack? How is it you face this, brother or Sister Mary? How is it you faced all these things and nothing ever changed about you? You say, because how good my God is. Amen. That's how good my God is. Amen. So I ask you this morning. We came off two full weeks of revival and as well as a weekend meeting. Did you carry your baskets home? Or is everything still stuck up here inside these walls? Amen. Have you gone out and told others about what God did at Emmanuel Baptist Church? Amen. When you say, when you walk into the workplace on a Monday, or you walked in during those week meetings, you walked into the workplace on Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever day it was, and, and somebody told you, said, well, you just look excited, Brother Donald. Do you say, yeah, I, I just had a good night last night. Or did you willing to share and say, let me tell you what God did at our church last night. Mm, yeah. Amen. Because, see, it, it's very easy to just get caught up and, and people look at you and see something different about your countenance and you just say, yeah, I'm just, I'm, life's been going pretty good right now. Or are we willing to carry our baskets home so that they can see those things and say, let me tell you how good God's been to me lately. Yeah. Let me tell you how good God has been. It's not because that, that I deserved it. It's not because I'm anybody special. It's just because that's how good God is. Amen. That's right. Or do we keep them all inside of here? Or have we kept them all inside of here? How many times have we said, we want to see God do something with Emmanuel Baptist Church? He can't do that if we're not carrying our baskets home. He can't do that if we're just coming and setting and meeting and we're setting in revival and going through the motions and enjoying God's goodness and can't wait for the next one, whenever it may be, and just come and go as we please if we're not taking it out there. The only way we're going to see God truly do something is to take it outside there this young lad he could have just stayed right there he could have stayed right there and I don't know what he, but just imagine that of him going home the effect that it had on all those people that he passed imagine the effect that it had on all those people as he went by you know I've often thought about you know since we, we were uh, uh, brother Jordan was about to call him the book of Noah this morning I've often thought about Noah Think about Noah building that ark. Mm -hmm. Spending all that time on that ark. How many people do you think walk by making fun of him? Yeah, amen. It's true. How crazy is he? We ain't never seen rain before. What's he talking about? We need this boat because it's going to flood. This man's lost his mind. Yeah. How many times, Brother Phil, do you think those people continue to pass that way, though, before it had an effect on them? Sure. No, he might be on to something. He's not, he's not quit this. He's still going. Yeah. It's been 30 years and he hasn't missed a beat. Right. It's been 40 years and he hasn't missed a beat. We can make fun of him all we want, but you right. know what? His God's doing something for him that he believes he needs this. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. How often are we willing to take our baskets home and go out and show others? This lad could have not even shared his lunch, obviously. 
But he could have stayed right there. Are we willing to take our baskets and say, let me show you what God's done for me. Let me tell you what God's done for us at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Now I said, you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit this morning. Imagining that lad just walking home, six baskets on each arm. I don't know, maybe he's got four on each arm, two hung around his neck. Just, just uh, uh, skipping on his way home. Can't wait to show mom and dad what Jesus did for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do we go out these walls, out these doors the same way? Yeah. Or we walk out there today with pooch mouth, too worried about this, too worried about that, too worried about uh, uh, Josh got us out too early this morning. With, uh, I was going to go someplace and eat, and they don't even open until 1230, and now I'm going to miss it. <laughs> what's, what's our attitude outside of here? Sure. Because it's that attitude outside of here is what everybody sees. Right. Right. That's yeah. the only way we're going to get them into here. Yeah. And they need to see exactly who God is to us, right. how good God is to us, right. if we're going to see them get in church, get in revival, and we're going to see the church just bust at the seams and see this community turned upside down. Yeah, this right. world needs it. Yeah, God right. wants to do it, but it's going to be up to us willing to carry our baskets home. Everything that God's done for us outside of there instead of keeping it in here. I'm done, Brother Jordan. You come hit. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.